Hey everybody, it's Anna King, your host, with my co-host, Roxy B. Listen guys, we have some guests with us today and we are so excited and you are going to be excited too. Yes, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. So we're excited again. We've got the Daughters of Thunder with us today. Sister Christy Griffith, Miss Danielle Morgan is in the house. So we're pumped that you've tuned in. Me and Roxy are going to just, we're just really excited to have them. Yes, we are. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, we're so excited to be here. Yes. Well, you guys at home, I want you to open up your Bibles. We're going to do some studying today. So go to Luke chapter 15. Mm-hmm. And we're going to read verses 11 and 12 and 13. And really today's topic is the prodigals. And so I want to encourage you, we're going to read the only three verses, but I'm going to encourage you later on in your study time to finish this chapter out because it's super, super good. So here we go. Follow along with us. Verse 11 said, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And this was Jesus uh, talking to the group that was there. There was the religious Pharisees there. And so Jesus was trying to convey this message. But here he is talking. He said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And it's really a definition of a prodigal. Yes. Wasting time, wasting substance on things maybe that didn't really matter. And, you know, this is something we're going to talk about. So maybe you've got prodigals at home. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you do, we want you. We want this show to bring you hope, Absolutely. and to know these testimonies is going to really encourage your faith. And uh, so, get ready, to get excited about it. So, let's start off, right? Absolutely, let's get in. Yeah. All right. So, let's start off, Sister Christy, daughter of thunder. Talk to <laughs> us. Tell us about your life, your testimony. All right. So, um, just briefly on my testimony, just so you know where I came from. Um, I like to more talk about where the Lord has me now, but mainly how he brought me from there. Um, So growing up, um, I started using drugs when I was about 12. Um, My mom and dad divorced when I was about five. You know, um, I was back and forth in their homes, but they both took me to church. I was raised up in church. Um, But at 12 years old, I started using drugs. So, of course, by nature, I was in and out of systems, uh, institutions, institutions. I was kind of like Joseph, the jailhouse raised me, Um, and so the older I got, the more involved with that lifestyle that I got, Um, you know, and then there I was. I was hopeless, um, disgusted, Um, how this says, how it wasted um, his substance. Mm -hmm. I felt that. Um, I felt like I had wasted my life. I felt like I had wasted my time. I felt like I had wasted my money. I felt like I was a waste at that point. Well, I now. felt so uh, like I just shouldn't be here anymore. Um, uh, rejected, abused, hurt, anything you can think of, discarded. Um, that's the life that I chose, you could say. But at the same time, that's where Satan had me captivated at. Um, until, you know, um, my whole life, even as a child, I could see the times that the Lord would be drawing me to him. Mm. And um, a lot of times people would tell me that's not true, that the Lord wouldn't that the Lord wouldn't move on me like that and me a sinner. But that's what I pray for. I pray for the prodigals that's because good. I pray for them to run into the love of mm. God. I pray for them to run into Christ. And so looking back on my life, I can see all of the times that the Lord would straight set a roadblock up on me, would mm. send someone to... Uh, prophesied to me would send someone to testify to me and every time I would just feel like I was unworthy I would feel like uh, oh my gosh you know like Lord leave me alone like I I just didn't understand it It, it, you know I didn't understand it Um, but each time that a person would testify to me or I would run into the Lord or he would speak to me it would shake me it would like start chiseling away 
you know, and I would start to begin to see that he is the one that was there for me. Yes. He was the one that loved me. He was the one that was not going to reject me. He was the one that was going to be there. And he began to tell me I wasn't a waste. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, he was not going to reject me. He was going to be there for me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I ended up going to rehab. Um, I just woke up one day and I said, I'm done. I'm done with this. You know, I, I'm ready to live for you, Lord. And so I did. And a group of uh, ministry women came in. That's how I met Miss Anna. <laughs> and um, so I got baptized with the Holy Spirit that day. Um, and ever since then, I've been living and running for the Lord. And um, just the love and the freedom that I found with Christ. Um, I can relate to the prodigal because so he found me and loved me when I was a drug addict on the street, you know? Yeah, so good. And so here I am, a living prodigal miracle <laughs> of God. And here to tell you, you know, to have hope for your prodigal. That's so good. Yeah. Well, one question I was thinking, you know, I was thinking of the parents at home and, you know, some of them have probably been praying for years mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and just thinking, you know, almost lose, feel like you're losing hope. And really the scripture doesn't tell us how long, you know, this boy, uh, this, this prodigal was away from his father. That's really um, good. so what, how long was it that you were, you, you said you were raised up in church, you were raised, you know, uh, your your dad's a pastor, right? And so you're raised up in that environment. So how long was it between the time that you just fell out? How long was it that you were out in the pig pen, per se? Years. Um, I started using drugs when I was 12. Um, I began to um, really, I went to church and stuff. When I, I'm 29 right now. I'll be 30 in a few months. So when I was about 20 years old, um, I started going to a church of God. And I dedicated my daughter to God, and I started really getting in church and stuff. And so I remember um, yearning for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and saying, oh, God, I want that so bad. I want that so bad. And so um, I backslid. I wasn't consistent. And mm -hmm. so um, I relapsed on everything. Probably the worst time of my life, nothing that I'm proud of. I lost custody of my daughter for a year. And so uh, it's almost five years now that I've really been saved, baptized, and really living for God, sold out to God. That's so good. And so you can safely say 20 years I was out in the world. Wow. So my mom and dad watched the road, you know, like the dad said in here, mm -hmm. that he watched the road. Jesus. So could you imagine watching the road? Mm -hmm. Not only for me, but for my sister also, that they watch the road for us to come home. Can you pray for that person, that parent that's out there now that's watching the road, waiting mm -hmm. and having a vision that that son or that daughter is getting ready to come home, getting ready to get back to God? Can you just yes. speak a prayer to them? Yes, right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, I just pray that you give fresh strength, God, fresh vision, God, to the person that's watching the road right now, God. God, that they begin to see, God, that every time they look at them, that they begin to see them coming up the road, God. That every time that they see them, that they say that you will work for God, that they will have a fresh vision, God, and fresh strength and fresh revelation, God, that they declare the works of the Lord over them, God, and that their household shall be saved and that they shall serve you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're believing that your prodigal is going to be coming home too. What a powerful testimony. I mean, it really is. Um, you know, I was thinking as you're talking about that, uh, we, we have privately talked about it, but you were talking where prodigal doesn't necessarily only mean drugs necessarily, you know? Absolutely. Um, I have met people from all different aspects of life. And something that I have learned is it's not just drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I meet people that uh, is bound with depression, PTSD, anxiety, all of these things. It doesn't have to be drugs. Of course, when you mention drugs, you know, it's automatically that it's the worst of the worst. But mm -hmm. each one is a captivated prison. Yes. Mm -hmm. Each one is a fetter and a chain from Satan. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it doesn't have to be drugs. Um, it could be anything that uh, you are uh, waiting on the Lord to deliver you or your family member mm -hmm. from that's so good because the word prodigal means something that waste uh-huh waste so whatever the chain you know it is it's wasting your life so to speak that's so good yeah. Yeah. all right well that's it for this segment but we're going to be right back after this commercial you do not want to miss it no, we're going to daughter number two daughter yes. of thunder yes. yeah. <laughs> vacuuming mopping 
bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms, dining rooms, any room. Sunshine's Cleaning Service is here to clean so you don't have to. Call today, 606 344 0980. Are you looking for your dream home? Maybe one just like this, 17 acres, absolutely stunning. I can assist you. I'm licensed in all 120 counties. Whether you're looking for mini farms, farms want to build on land, barn dominiums are hot right now, I would love to help you. I would love for you to reach out, contact me today with the number that's on the screen. I'd be glad to help you. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, we are talking about the prodigal son in Luke 15 verses 11 through the rest of the chapter. We have a couple of special guests with us here today. Woo! Yeah, that's right. The Daughters of Thunder, Miss Christy and Miss yeah. Danielle. A few moments ago, if you haven't watched, you need to go back and watch. She was talking about her prodigal story and how amazing the Lord is there. And we're going to hear Miss Danielle's. And Danielle, before you go into your prodigal story, tell us a little bit about this Daughters of Thunder well, welcome. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. So, they call us the Daughters of Thunder, and this is in reference to James and John, the disciples. Um, and they they were nothing more than apostles of love. That's so And funny. so, um, I like that when that got started getting spoke over us. I like that because that, that is my story. It's That's nothing so short of love. So, um, I'll just start out, and I'm going to um, give a little bit of my testimony. So, we're talking about the prodigal, and um, I was once the prodigal, and, and not anymore. So, I was right. I, I was taken to church when I was a young girl. Um, my dad um, was a preacher, and so he would take me to church, and I got saved. Um, I was nine years old. Um, so... I had felt the Spirit of God at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, life kind of took a little twist and turn when I got about 14. My parents divorced and I got shot with a shotgun. Wow. wow. So, oh my um, gosh, I never knew that. <laughs> so they prescribed me a lot of painkillers mm -hmm. and a lot of medicine. Um, not realizing that it was a tactic of the enemy, um, mm -hmm. like a trauma thing. Um, I got away from I got away from God. Um, I got into um, the medicine part of it and not realizing that I was addicted. Mm -hmm. um, so I, for years, I would take medicine because I didn't walk for quite some time and I wasn't actually supposed to walk anymore. Um, but God worked a miracle there. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I would take this medicine because at the time I honestly did need it. But I didn't realize that really... Um, the hold that it had on me and it was just um satan another device of satan because i was already in a traumatic situation mm -hmm. so obviously um he added the medicine on top of it um this went on this happened when i was 14. this went on i was in addiction um off and on until i was around um let's see i was 36. so it started out with the pills, um, and I would try to quit them on my own, um, and I, did, I didn't know how to stop. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize that I was bound. I didn't realize that the enemy had put yokes around my neck. I did not realize that. Um, I was not raised um, to believe in anything like that. I just, um, I, it was very um, conservative Baptist church that I was in, and I'm not. I'm um, getting on religion or anything like that. Um, so anyhow, um, so I would try to stop the pills on my own, um, and it was just a horrible, endless cycle. Mm. I would, you know, get to feeling cruddy, and um, I would, I would just, well, I got these pills in here. Let me go take some of them. Wait a minute. When you said you begin to feel cruddy, you mean you like started feeling depressed, down? Yes. Okay. So she was talking about, you know. Um, addiction and stuff like that addiction was never the problem mm -hmm. um it was trauma depression um it yeah. was things of that nature and of course without knowing god mm -hmm. um 
you know, I, I look to the things of the world. That's good. Can I ask you a question? Because, you know, what you're kind of starting and talking about is you were in church, but yet you were still dealing with some emotional things. I was. You're dealing with depression. You're dealing with trauma. You're dealing yeah. with these things. And what the world says is to medicate. Yes. Well, and and I under, you know, we understand you have to have, we have to have medicine. I'm not saying yep. medicine is bad. But at this point, you didn't understand, you wasn't taught, perhaps, right. that there is deliverance, there's freedom exactly. in God. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. okay. That's where I was going with that. I was not <laughs> taught about the deliverance and the freedom. I was not taught that um, there were yokes of bondage. I was not mm. taught about things like that. I just thought that was something you dealt with and you'd be quiet about it. And, you know, I began to um, think, you know, I'm not really sure if God's even real. That's you know, good. I'm not sure because why would I be in so much pain? Um, why would, you know, all of this stuff that had happened to me, I wasn't even sure. And I got to a point of unbelief. Mm -hmm. I didn't even believe in God anymore. I wasn't sure if what I had ever felt in church was ever even real. Wow. Um, I, w I was very suicidal because I was so depressed. Can I say something right mm -hmm. there? I just felt right then that she's talking about there's things you just couldn't talk about. Yes. And I feel like there's so many people, yes. maybe you even, are suffering yes. in silence because you have no place to talk to mm -hmm. or no one, no place to go safely. But, wow. And sometimes yes. it just turns into that ugly yeah. cycle, and it does lead to more things than just that single problem mm -hmm. up front. But I think that's important right there. There were times I would try to open up, mm. um, and when I and when I did, um, I would always um, I would always get shut down or condemned about the way I felt. Mm. I was brought up that you know um, depression and, and anxiety and and trauma and things of that nature, um, you just deal with it. It's not, you know, you don't talk about stuff like that. You just go it's on normal. and you put a smile on, you know, and, you know, and it's all going to be all right. I was not all right. I was, I was dead on the inside. I needed, I didn't know, um, I didn't know God. I honestly didn't. And like I had said a minute ago, um, I got to a point where I did not even mm. believe in God. That's good. I was very angry. I was very bitter. I was very hurt. Um, and every time that I would try to reach out, I would always meet that, um, I would always meet that condemning spirit that would condemn me and tell me how wrong I was. And that, mm. you know, I, I messed up and I shouldn't be doing the things that I should, that I was doing. And, and I shouldn't have. But it was the only way I knew how to deal. That's good. It, it was your medication. It, you that's know, what. That's why people do what they do, right? And Absolutely. so, um, it, I had went to a church service right off the street. Um, let's see. It was a. I was probably thirty three, and I was very addicted. I was very broken. I was walking the street, and um, there was something that drew me into this church, and now I know it was God. I obviously know it was the Holy Spirit. And um, he broke the yokes that night. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. The power of God hit me, and I didn't even know what it was. But I knew that it was good, and I knew that it was wonderful. Mm. And so um, right then and there, the addiction broke off. The depression broke off. Mm. I was free. Yes. I walked with God for a couple months. But I wasn't, um, I was deceived back out. I walked out on it. Mm. Um, and it got worse. And, you know, the Bible says that, you know, when you walk out, you're going to, it's going to get seven times worse. You're mm -hmm. going to meet up with devils seven times stronger. And this yeah, is true. When, yeah, the scripture talks about when a spirit is cast out and it, he comes back looking at that freshly uh -huh. swept place yes. and brings seven more. So basically what she's talking about is deliverance. You know, mm -hmm. God is still in the delivering business. So she was, you know, just couldn't find help anywhere. She right. finds a church, the Lord, yeah. it, it, the, the prayers, you know, the yeah. faithful prayers. You're drawn into the church. Yes. You have an, a supernatural ex experience. Mm -hmm. And then at some point you're... I'm deceived back out. You're deceived back out. Okay. So I went, I, you know, I, I, I got way worse. Um, long story short, I'm going to 
hurry up with this and sh tell you what God has done. Come it's on. been almost four years now. Um, so I went to rehab because I didn't have anywhere else to go. They gave me a Bible, and I was like, no, Jesus doesn't love people like me. He, he You know, mm -hmm. I walked out on him. Oh but goodness. he's not like anything of this world. Mm. He's not um, like man. You know, we walk out on people and they probably wash our hands, wash their hands with us. So I asked him there in that detox room. I said, if you're real and you forgive me and you'll help me. Because like I said, I was to the point where I wasn't sure he was real. Mm. I was thinking everything I had experienced I really, that really didn't happen, you know. All right, well, I'm going to stop you for just a second. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I cannot wait to hear the redemption story. So stay yes. tuned, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Anna King here with Reliance One Realty. Are you looking to buy a farm, or are you looking to sell a farm? If so, I can help you. In the last six months, I've sold over $2 million worth of real estate. I'm licensed in all 120 counties in Kentucky, and I'm very enthusiastic, and I would love to hear from you. Vacuuming, mopping, bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms, dining rooms, any room. Sunshine's Cleaning Service is here to clean so you don't have to. Call today, 606-344-0980. Welcome back to the show. If you have not heard the first part of the show, you have missed out. I'm Absolutely. telling you what we have been. We're here with the daughters of thunder, uh -huh. apostles of love, and and we talked about that in the reference in the show. But amazing testimonies. We've talked to Christy, and her testimony's been outstanding. Yes. She's in ministry now. It's been wonderful. And we're over here with her sister Danielle, and she was just talking about how that she had got into rehab. You know, there's rehab centers that's popping up, yes. and we're definitely advocates of Christian rehab centers. And so, Danielle, you want to tell us, where was that life-changing event? You got in rehab, and what, what was next? Went to rehab, like I was um, saying a minute ago. So I went to rehab, and rehab is a wonderful place to get your mind right and focus on you and God. But when I went, I wasn't sure I believed in God. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a Bible when I got there. And, um, you know, for a couple of days, it just sat there <laughs> and, um, something just th kept drawing me to it. So I thought, you know, I have nothing else to lose at this point. Yeah, I good. have nothing else to lose. And, and I came here for help. So I'm going to try something. So I began to open that Bible up and I began to read it and the love and the grace mm -hmm. and the mercy that poured out on me in that rehab room, there were the love and the goodness of God, I began to see that everything I had went to went through was right here in this book, and it was all spiritual. Mm -hmm. And all I needed was a Savior. Come on, and He That's was so that Savior. He is the I am that I am. Yeah, He's on. everything and more that He says He is. Mm -hmm. And you know, I never thought anybody loved me. I always felt so unloved, and I was so broken that I didn't think. I just didn't know what to think. You know, I would, I would try. I, I just wanted to die. God loved me so much that he reached down into that rehab mm -hmm. room and he wrecked my life with his love and, and goodness. Absolutely. And he loved me. He loved me to life. And when I would read the word, Anna, <laughs> oh my goodness, the love. I cannot get past the love of it. That's how much he loves us. Jesus. And for those prodigals out there, he loves them the same. Yes, he, he will wreck your life just like he did mine. He will get you in a place just to show you how much he loves you. You think it's the end of it, but it's not. It's the beginning. It's only the beginning of his love. Wow. I love it. You wow. know, so you're basically you're telling us, Danielle, that the word works. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything that I am is the word. Come on. That's yeah. So good. Everything, every fiber of my being is nothing but the word of God working. Because there's a million reasons why I should be dead. I would try to commit suicide, mm -hmm. and God would love me back to life every time. Mm -hmm. Love wow. me back to life. Love me back to life until that, you know, I finally surrendered it all to him in that, in that rehab room. when I said, if you're real, show me. Show mm -hmm. me. Because after you're so beat down, you don't know what to believe. Mm -hmm. And guess what he did? 
And he she, showed me. And he didn't wow. have to. My gosh. That's but so he good. did. That's so good. I'm and telling, he still does. It is, <laughs> he right. did, it's a never-ending love. It's an eternal love. Wow. And yes. so I don't know if you guys have been watching out there. I hope that this show has gave you hope. Absolutely. Absolutely. The prodigals are coming home. We make that declaration that your prodigal is coming home. Yes. They're going to come running, and all you got to do is keep looking out that window, yes, right. watching down that road. Mm -hmm. And so, Danielle, would you pray for the prodigals that's um, watching and yes. to know there is hope and they do have worth, yes. all those things. Yes. yes. Father, I come before you, God. Yes. I come before you as boldly as I know how, God. God, you said that, you know, you give hope to the hopeless, God, and that's everything that I am, God, is hope. God, I just pray that this goes forth, God, and gives hope to those that are lost. Those yes. prodigals, God, that are feeling like the world is has left them high and dry, God. I pray, God, that you manifest to them, God. I pray that you show them your love, God. I pray that you wreck their world, God, yes. with yes. your goodness and your mercy. God, I just pray that you call their name, God. God, and they audibly just have an... They hear you. They... They hear you saying, come home, come home, and that they have that awakening, God, that their eyes be opened, God, and that they don't run anymore, but run to you, not from you, God. Yes. God, I just yes. pray right now for the parents, Father, for the parents that are watching for them. God, I pray that you give them the hope, God, to withstand God, and God, I pray, Father, that you just open their eyes and give them fresh hope, God, and bring the prodigals home, God. Yes. You said that you would pour your spirit out, God. God, and I just pray that you bring them home from captivity and pour your spirit out upon them, yes. just like you have done us, God. Yes, Lord. God, you're no respecter of persons, God. We just pray that you bring them home, God. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. That's so good. It was so good. Thank you guys for joining in today. We hope this has blessed you and encouraged you. We see you guys next week. Bye, guys.